Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I walk through some cool tools, completely unsponsored, uh, that I have found throughout the year, and I do an honest review summary at the end of each of these videos. I've been doing this for three years, so if there is a technology that you don't see in this season's Honest Review series, make sure you check down below in the description to see all of the others that I have done. All right, and so the technology we are going to be reviewing today is... If you are interested in finding out my honest review about this technology, make sure you stick around. Steve Ingram, um, I used to lead solution architecture for SmartLogic, and now I lead Semaphore solution architecture for MarkLogic following the acquisition last year. So yeah, it's MarkLogic and SmartLogic, uh, Semaphore combined. It's all about making more sense of your unstructured content. Um, so, you know, on the left, you've got you know, raw text. On the right, you've got actionable data, and some of that's coming from semantic analysis of, of the text provided by Semaphore. Some of that's coming from looking up into reference data. And because these are so tightly coupled, um, are, can people use Smart Logic without Mark Logic, or is it like they are now like of one? No, absolutely. One of the reasons why uh, we were acquired is because the uh, the owners wanted to have a market they could sell to, but well, just use, using um, just using the semantic side of the product. So absolutely, they work right. very very well together. But uh, yeah. you can use each one individually if you need to. That's great. Thank you. So uh, this is um, Semaphore. It's actually running on my my local server. Hopefully, you can see something that says "Welcome to Semaphore." Yes. Um, it's version five point four point two. Version five point six was actually released thirty five minutes ago. Oh wow! Um, when this was recorded, obviously. Um, it has literally right. gone out the door. Um, I don't have a copy of it because it's that new. So unfortunately, I'm going with a slightly previous version, but you know, it doesn't. Well, well that's great. Anyway. But for the audience, late breaking news, right? They, absolutely. You're, you're hearing hearing of it now, which is great. No, absolutely. Um, so uh, this is uh, what we call a studio. It's a single interface. It's a web-based application accessible through browsers. Mm -hmm. And I can get to all the main components of, of Semaphore from here. Um, we have in green this tile. This is all about the modeling piece. This is the, and we have two two interfaces, which I'm going to show. There's the knowledge model manager, which is kind of the power user tool. Mm -hmm. And then we have the knowledge review tool, which is key for bringing input, input from subject matter experts in a controlled Great. manner. Um, on the right-hand side, we have the um, semantic integration service. And this is all about making the model searchable and browsable and providing mm -hmm. vocabulary services. But I'm going to start in the middle with, with classification. So this is... Um, this is the what we call the document analyzer. This is a kind of a window into the service which is running in the background and will be handling requests coming in through the APIs or the integration packs. So mm -hmm. this is when we show um, when we talk about sort of classification, fact extraction, enrichment. You'll see it as a um, you know this is an interactive process, but generally this will be buried in a workflow or you you would yeah. never see the screen unless you actually want to play with things. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a document. Um, let me just open it up and stick it off to one side. Um, and this is a Word document, and this is um, it actually. Let me um, pop it up here. Uh, it's a Word document, and it's describing um, a space mission. No, it's not actually. Um, it's actually describing the Apollo 11 uh, mission. I've just snapped mm -hmm. the text from Wikipedia, but um, the main thing being, uh, it mentions Apollo a few times, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't actually mention Apollo 11 in the document. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just tuck that off to one side. So we're going to drop it into classification server. We're going to classify. We're actually going to do two things. We're going to perform classification, and we're going to perform fact extraction. Uh, on this document um, using uh, a, a couple of, of knowledge models, one of which is our standard demonstration model, which is built from Wikidata and DBpedia, and it yep. is all about space missions content. And so, is, that, is that something that comes preloaded with the tool, or is that something that somebody would have to select what training? It's, to no, it, it comes preloaded with the tool. Um, hmm. If, unless you happen to be NASA, it may not be most <laughs> useful, but it's very good for demonstrating, um, okay. and people like it. Uh, right. But we also we do ship with a, a standard um, a subject taxonomy. It's the mm -hmm. International Public Sector Vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Very good sort of citizen government interaction mm -hmm. um, definitions, the sort of thing you'd see on a local government website. Mm -hmm. That's in the product, um, and you can use that. You can press a button and use that straight out of the box. So let me run through what you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side is the text that's been ripped out of the, the Word document. On the um, and that, so we have some of the raw text in sort of paragraph form. We've got, mm -hmm. we've got a table as well, which I'll come on to in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, on the right hand side, um, there's a couple of views here. This one is showing the classification results. So these are all metadata items that we've decided need to be associated with this document, and they're they're in two forms. Some of them are just classification results where we've said these are the terms in your knowledge model that match match this document. Mm -hmm. And some uh, are actually extracted from the text. And I'll, I'll show you uh, shortly. 
Each um, uh, piece of metadata has a, a sort of class, a category, um, a value, uh, a confidence score. Mm -hmm. And behind the scenes is um, the ID of the term. So you can classify documents in multiple languages and mm -hmm. we'll tie them back to the to the same same term. Great. Um, so let me just start to show what's happening. I'm just and that going confidence to... is based on the training set and how it's, confident that the machine is that it's, it got it correct. It's, it's not based on a training set, but it is based on how well the document matched the taxonomy. So you're not seeing anything below, uh, I'm just showing with a pencil, I need to put that away. You're not seeing anything below a um, below, below a sort of set, set confidence score. Mm -hmm. And the score is derived from um, the sort of templates that we provide. So it's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, different types of documents in different situations. So if you're, if you're processing very small news articles, you may want to have a concept be flagged for metadata uh, with only a few mentions of that concept. Mm -hmm. um, if you're dealing with things like named entities, you may just need the name to appear and that's good enough. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're processing ticker symbols or something like that, if, if that four letter code is in there, it's mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's good evidence. But if you're processing larger articles, you want to do, you know, looking at um, uh, investment advice or, you know, analysis, you may want to, um, bring in more evidence from related concepts mm -hmm. um, as I'm actually about to show in, in this okay. demonstration. And you can choose and you, we ship with eight or nine standard uh, templates, but you mm -hmm. can absolutely customize them uh, to your heart's content. And those are basically um, templates of rules on when a tag would be actually assigned to a document when yes. certain rules are present. Okay. So let's just look at uh, classifications. I'm just going to switch off. Um, no, I need that one. I don't need that one. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. But the main thing I wanted to talk about is this. So we I showed you when I showed you the word document, there were no um, mentions of Apollo 11 anywhere in the document. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we are saying with a confidence score of 0.9, which is a pretty high confidence score, yeah. it is about the Apollo 11 mission, even though it doesn't mention Apollo 11 anywhere in the text. But because it... Um, in our model, we have the Apollo 11 mission um, was crewed by Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin um, because it was powered by a, a Saturn V. Um, it had the call sign of Eagle. It landed mm -hmm. in the Sea of Tranquility. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other IDs in here. Mm -hmm. Then we can say it's, there's enough evidence for us to say this. This is about uh, Apollo 11, um, even though it doesn't actually mention Apollo 11 anywhere. Let me now switch from classification to in fact extraction. So, so what we've got here is two types of, of fact being returned. We have events, um, and what these are are anything that's in a table, but it's a date. Mm -hmm. um, so we have defined uh, a sort of we've, fact extraction is all about defining patterns and sequences. It's a mm -hmm. declarative process, and so we're saying, show me um, any, in any table in this document that contains a date. I want to know what that date is called. And so we're returning these as 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 events. So we have the um, landing date of the Apollo 11 mission launch date, um, mm -hmm. other stuff, uh, what nice. sorts in here. Yeah. I so, mean, that's going to be really helpful when you're starting to build the knowledge graph. Event data is not the easiest to yeah. model, but to, to be able to extract it by itself is pretty important. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so this is, this is, this is, this is, this, so this is the other yeah, second stage. So you could, we, we will take the text, we'll enrich uh, and identify the facts. Now you could, as you, as you say, build it into your knowledge graph, mm -hmm. or you could pass it off to a metadata hub or mm -hmm. use it for analytics or, or whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the pulling it out of the text that's quite useful. If you're looking at, say, uh, parts, um, you know, if it's, uh, supply chain, you want to, you've mm -hmm. got vendors are providing, providing data sheets on parts, you want to mm -hmm. be able to pull out the attributes and maybe cross-check them against safety, um, safety limits, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's kind of a semi-structured thing. Um, so before you go on from that, how... So are these, is there an event template that exists or is that something that has to be defined by um, the folks that are building these models? No, yeah, I, so I have defined a pattern that, okay. that, I'm, that, that, that my, I've said, you know, events look like this. Okay. Um, so it's not um, magic is the point. No, I wanted to make sure no, people knew it's not just like, hey, mysteriously, it does these things. You, you no. have to, and, I mean, that's a good thing too, because that means you can tailor what you need for your business. Yes. Um, so for example, we, uh, have a medical um, application whereby we have to redact names from patient mm. records, but we don't need to redact the, the doctor's name. Um, mm. And so all we can do, you know, it's very simple. We find a name because the NLP engine shows us a name. If it happens to have doctor in front of it, or there's some other form of words which identifies them as the carer, mm. then we can we, we don't need to redact that. We can just say, oh, found, found the doctor. Um, Let's and hope that none to... of the patients are also doctors, because doctors are also patients. Yeah, but that, that that also happens. But we, you know, that, then you would have a wider, you'd, you'd widen your scope to make sure that you're catching that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other, the, in that particular example, um, 
because it's GDPR compliant application, we need to, one of the things we have to check for is political party affiliation. Mm. And obviously it's doctors. So there's an awful lot of references of Labour, not the Labour Party. So again, yeah, you know, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, you, um, so we, 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 can, we can handle that quite easily. Okay. Um, so fa- these fact patterns can be based on, um, you know, structure. They can be based on taxonomy values. They can be based on NLP. They can be based mm-hmm. on static text. They can be multiple levels. So you can have facts that are based on facts, and and um, they, you know it's it's a very very powerful way of of um, of defining what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. So that one was so that one so that's basically events. That's a, I'm looking for any table definition with a with a date in it. But actually, what you want to do is, is quite often just what you're coming and processing is completely free free form. But we can still um, handle that kind of thing. So what this is here, this is a um, because this application is looking for certain types of data, um, our fact extraction pattern is looking for anything that mentions a location and a mission and returning mm-hmm. that as the landing point. So we can just look, we, all we're doing here is looking for any sentence that contains a mission and contains a place of interest and we're returning that as, as a data point. So mm-hmm. let's look at the knowledge model management side of the equation. Um, so fundamentally, everything is a knowledge model uh, in Semaphore. It doesn't matter what it's representing. They're all held the same way. They're all uh, fundamentally at the bottom level. It's an RDF graph. Mm-hmm. And um, what Semaphore gives you is a collaborative tool for managing those. So you can, uh, I've logged into my machine. It's my machine. I've got administrator access, but actually I could be given, you can lock down so so, so people can see certain models. Nice. People can change, uh, see, see some models, change others, mm-hmm. and it's done on a model basis. So it's not a question of various levels of user. You could, I could have a read-only access to model A and total mm-hmm. control over model B. Mm-hmm. So all these um, these colored boxes are, are knowledge models with different types. They can be used in combination. They can be used individually. Um, and we can also link them together. So for example, um, this one is a re- set of reference taxonomies I use for financial crimes demonstration. Um, mm-hmm. I just have it grade so I can see that it's, it's not a major model, um, but you can apply it for five, you know, color schemes um, up to your, whatever you want to do. And this is the model itself. Um, I, can, um, I can look at the model settings if I need to, but let, let's just dive straight in mm-hmm. to the master. So this is the uh, knowledge model manager. It's um, is it browser-based. Um, on the left-hand side, we have concept schemes, mm-hmm. various ways of, of organizing your, your concepts. So we use the SCOS Excel standard. So I will, everything I will refer to is a concept. So I get certainty type and it'll tell me if I, because quite often you, you might have multiple um, mm-hmm. Labels, you know, we don't, you can have concepts with the same label. They'll have, you can have unique URIs, unique IDs. And so you could have Apple the fruit, Apple the daughter of Gwyneth Paltrow, mm-hmm. Apple the company. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine a model where you'd want to have that unless you're doing news. Uh, but yeah, you could do it if you needed to. Um, and so also uh, the other thing is uh, we can, um, uh, it, it's poly- polyhierarchical. So there's no restriction on things having to be in one place. Absolutely one concept could have multiple parents. Um, and that's, is that what the paths to concept would be? Would you see multiple if Apollo 11 would be in Absolutely, multiple? you oh, would. I like that. Um, so I th- let me just go off script slightly. I think Neil Armstrong has multiple. Yeah, so he's got Man in Space Soonest and Neil Armstrong. So okay. that, this, uh, I can't, the quality of this model, we, we get it from Dbpedia, um, and mm-hmm. somebody decided to have a multiple concepts around Man in Space Soonest um, because it's actually <laughs> it's, it's one of these topics of debate. Was it Yuri Gagarin? Was it Neil Armstrong? You oh, know, sure, anyway. it's a debate, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, it's a semantics company. We're full of those. Uh, <laughs> right, let's go back to uh, Apollo 11. Uh, where are we? There we go. Um, so in the middle, we have our definition of Apollo 11. So top left, it's the mission. It, it is our class of mission. Concepts can have multiple classes. You can use classes to define what it is, restrict the properties, relationships, that kind of thing. Or you could even use it for flagging. So you could see obs- you could say obsolete term if you wanted to. Uh, this concept can have multiple multiple classes. And- so what we, we adopted SCOS Excel because it mm-hmm. lets us create the you know detach the label from the um, because the, each each label actually is a concept in its own right, mm-hmm. uh, and we can also attach properties to them. So we can say for this label, do we want to enable case sensitivity? Do we want to enable stemming? Do we need it treated mm, as exact phrase? Nice. So I like that. That's, okay, that, that's that, that's why we adopted the Scott Excel strategy. Mm-hmm. I, I do love seeing the related concepts here. Um, so these would be the things that would actually be structuring a graph once you get into graph. Absolutely, and you can you can indeed um, have a, oh, like a graph that. mode if you want to. Uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're now we're quite intentionally. We are only showing the node and its nearest neighbors mm-hmm. um, because that's pretty much what a, most what a human can get their head around. Also, yeah. it fits in the space on the screen. Um, <laughs> going forward, uh, we do recognize that there is a need to try and graph, show more of the graph. It's something yeah. we're going to be doing. Yeah, right it's now. like the multi-hop. Usually people don't want to go past <clears throat> like three hops. Yeah. So 
it still looks like a lot, but if you travel from Apollo 11 to Buzz Aldrin and then like the next hop over, that's your three hops. So it's not as bad for screen viewing. Yeah. And we, you know, the, 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 it's clickable. So we're following. Oh, nice. Um, now we're looking at Buzz Aldrin. If I went back to the details, uh, we'd have the de information for Mr. Aldrin. Uh, and I like the 11. example here that you're using too, because the relation um, is crude by that. I'm that's not necessarily from any one ontology that exists out there, although NASA has their own ontology. So maybe that's where it's coming from, but you, and correct me if I'm wrong here, um, you should be able to make your own relations for your business. Accurate? Absolutely. Yeah, yep, absolutely. That, that's fundamental. So we've got the relationships. So these top ones, are the so stiff ones and low down um, the hierarchical relationships, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, Go to any any depth, any level, you know, no no restrictions on there. Oh, I like. Uh, so, would mappings be to link data sources? Right. Um, I haven't uh, enabled that for this demo. I do apologise, but yeah. So this is this is new in five, version five point four. Mm -hmm. So these are um, we use the Open Refine service. Yep. Um, we actually use it two ways. So you can connect to here to any Open Refine uh, compatible uh, reconciliation service. Mm -hmm. So there are ones defined for Wikidata, um, mm -hmm. and so we could have that as as a link. Um, from, from from here, and the obviously, you can also link to things that are SCOS, SCOS Excel concepts or SCOS concepts mm -hmm. in an external ontology. Um, it could be one that's managed by Semaphore. It might be one that you don't need to pull into Semaphore. So you, if you don't want to link, create these linked models, you want the definition to sit, and you just want to point it to it, mm -hmm. then uh, absolutely the mapping service is 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 will be there for you for that. Mm -hmm. And we also turn it around as well. So we also have a reconciliation service. So if you're using so Open Refine. And you want to see how your definitions match what's in your taxonomy. You can do it from within OpenRefine. You just point to us, and we will then pass all the information back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's um, nice. that's you know, in in the product five for version um, five point four. Uh, I think the other thing on this panel. So at the bottom, we got metadata properties. So you can define your scope notes, history notes, mm -hmm. UR link data URIs, all that kind of thing. Um, and in this case, I think we've also got you know, mission patches. Mm -hmm. um, Properties, labels, relationships are all restricted based on the class in this case. You get, if you don't define, assign a class, you'll get what's available for concept. If you do assign a class, you start to, um, uh, you, you can get you know, more relationships. And we will check. So if you were to say um, this drop down is only things that are valid for the classes that are active. Mm -hmm. And if I was to say, um, where are we? Um, in program, uh, and I start typing, it's going to only give me the restriction so it's going to restrict my possibilities to mm -hmm. um, things that are valid for that uh, that relationship mm -hmm. right so let me throw that away um right and then on the extreme right hand side um so quite often people look at semaphore and they go well you know that's a lot of work um which which isn't actually the case but what we're trying to do with um the product as we're evolving it is to provide tools to a human to make it easier for them to maintain uh, mm -hmm. the taxonomies. Mm -hmm. um, so if, we, if, if, as in often the case with a new deployment, all we have is a, a possibly an Excel with two or three levels and a load of definitions, mm -hmm. what you want to do is be able to provide a richness around that. And we have uh, various ways of doing that. And that's they come under what we call the side panel um, widgets. Now, this side panel um, is it's an open API. You can write your own web services that will mm -hmm. um, can, if they conform to this mm -hmm. API, then you can integrate your application. So if you have a search engine, right. you have a reference data source, absolutely, you can you can make this available. Um, cool. um, but we we actually do provide a number of them uh, just as standard. So we, Wikipedia is 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 an obvious one. Mm -hmm. um, so this just takes your concept, looks it up in Wikipedia, and then what you could start to do is um, actually take some. Um, oh, I see. It's it's almost we, like a workstation now. You can grab yep. stuff from there and move it over. Yep. Drop it across. Um, so that's a very basic one. Uh, getting a little bit cleverer is um, lexical resources. So this is, um, we have a, an index of sort of 40 million Wikipedia articles. Mm -hmm. um, and we've pre-processed that using a support vector machine to come up with clusters of, of related terms of significance. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that is, was, this is what, what the widget's actually doing, is searching that secondary index. Mm -hmm. So it's saying, in if for, for, the, for the term Apollo 11, I have three types of information. I've got what we call signpost terms, which are highly relevant for Apollo 11. Oh, so mm -hmm. highly relevant for the concept that's been, been sent to us. I've got terminology clusters, which are we've got less of a confidence value. And down the bottom, I've got some some other other concepts in there. And the idea behind this this term is it's kind of giving you a head start. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's basically we... reading all of the articles that are even possible yeah. about yeah. Apollo 11 for you, and then you get to do what you want with it. But it's reading yeah. them all for you, so you don't. Yeah. Have to. 
Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you for that. Um, I, I might record that and use it. Um, that's great. Oh, so, yeah, before, so, you, before you move on, so this is yep. this is based off Wikipedia. Um, yep. if, if I had my own corpus of documents, could I do this with that? Not yet. Okay. That's going to um, be very helpful if you get there. <laughs> hold, hold that thought. Um, okay. So what we can do is... Um, Pick some, um, pick you know relevant Turk concepts, and again add them across as um, uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, we do is translation widget, so um, we can take uh, your, uh, for example, the English label. So if you need to support multiple languages, what we could do, we use Microsoft Cognitive Services for this. Um, you will take the labels, send them off to and receive translation. So we've taken the English one, sent them off and back of come Russian translations. And mm -hmm. if I wanted to, I could just um, dump these across into the model. I won't because this is my master copy, but uh, mm -hmm. we have that, have, have that ability. And any language supported by, by Microsoft is there. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of useful, useful feature there. So um, then the last one is the text analytics um, side panel. Mm -hmm. What this is, is in the classification language server, uh, you can upload small subsets of documents. So you wouldn't want to take your entire corpus, but mm -hmm. you might want to have um, 20, 30 documents or so around a particular sort of theme. Upload that into the classification server. And we need, to be, we need to be very careful because um, we're then holding content and we, you know, we don't want to get into trouble with sort of GDPR and things like that. Sure. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's, only the, it's only available to the person who uploaded that, that content. Mm -hmm. um, but then they get, the, they get a sort of similar sort of ability to exploit with the lexical resources side panel. What, what we do with this is you could choose the labels you want to do. You, want to want, you choose the labels from your concept mm -hmm. and then it will compare them to the, uh, the various um, uh, sets of documents. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is we'll return... Um, sort of noun phrases or key terms that are, appear in paragraphs near those terms. Um, and then we'll give you a list of, the, list of that. And then you can, and actually that is quite useful because if, if we find it, um, we actually come up with a list and you can press a button and they will become either labels mm -hmm. or they will become children. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, so you can start to use your corpus of documents to start to populate your, um, nice. your taxonomy. <laughs>